Hello and welcome to Let's H. I'm Hushjo, your host. Scroll down and click on the Read More, follow the links in the blurb, and become a patron on Patreon to support quality content. So now we come to it. Angel Season 5, Episode 1, called Conviction. This is where it all began, or at least all of Season 5 began. And you know you're in for a great time when it's written and directed by Joss Whedon. Yes, that's right, my favourite. This attempted to introduce the Wolfram and Hart setting and put the group into that setting. The first thing that kind of stands out is the fact that it doesn't look even remotely like Wolfram and Hart has been shown to look for five years. This is because they redesigned the set, but there's really no reason why they would actually redesign the building, so it kind of fails in that way too. They didn't even try to make it look similar to the way that it looked before. In fact, it looks so drastically different that they might as well have done something completely different with the story. They couldn't just lampshade it in some way, say like, oh, we did a bunch of renovations for you, or to reflect the new management, we decided to completely overhaul the way the place looked. Now, I understand they didn't really want to be beholden to a lot of stuff, a lot of the mistakes, in fact, they had made in Season 4, which is understandable, but if you're gonna brush it under the rug, at least do the actual lifting of the rug and the brushing of the matter. This episode suffers from a lot of very typical Whedon writing, in that the dialogue tends to be a lot smugger and more self-congratulatory about that fact, when it really doesn't have any reason to be. It definitely doesn't deserve its smugness. The story is all over the place, and really most of the characters are written like an attempt to be funny assholes who just forgot the funny part. Angel is not witty or amusing, and in fact he comes off as extremely obnoxious during this episode, but that's kind of par for the course. It's a Whedon episode. But not to be outdone, as you may remember if you've listened to the previous episodes, Angel's pretty much an asshole on and off throughout this entire season. Fred gets in on the action too in this episode, and does and says some things that are really unforgivable. She was not this much of a psycho asshole in season 4, although she was mm, kind of crazy at points, and this just sets her up to be a really horrible person. Fortunately, the rest of the episodes that we have Fred, she's not given enough personality, really, to have a bad personality. But when she does actually get moments of doing something, she's a lot nicer than she is not nice. Wes, as usual, refuses to emote, so he might as well not be there. Gunn, unfortunately, is also sidelined through most of the episode for something that should have taken a lot less time, and he's used as a deus ex machina, which essentially completely changes his character to try and make the resolution of this fairly pedestrian, dull episode a lot easier. Because essentially, Whedon introduces way too many plots that he can't keep up with and cannot adequately resolve. He's not funny or clever, and the episode just comes off as extremely boring and incoherent. They do introduce some moral confusion about whether or not they should even be there, but they kind of made their choice last episode. The whole season finale of Angel Season 4 was about them coming to the conclusion that yeah, they could probably help a lot more people by doing this. Still, it does kind of suck that in Eve's introduction, which is one of the few good parts of the episode, she too sets up the standard of throwing everything else, literally everything that they did before now, under a bus so that what they do here can look better. That's not the case, guys. Angel isn't pathetic because he wants to help people and still wants to help the common folk. He's pathetic because he's such a needless jackass to the people that matter to him, the people that trust him, and the people that he trusts. It's highly problematic, too. Even at this early juncture, it's difficult to believe that any of these people would really trust Angel enough to follow him through the fire, as it were. This whole thing revolves around this corrupt court case with this jackass, and it's not actually that interesting. It's pretty dull. And he apparently also injected a virus into his son that, with a magic word, will be released. Well, that's kind of problematic, especially as his son is in grammar school. You would think that that would be a consideration, because if this can be released with just the wrong word, he's going to be hearing a lot of different words. So it's highly implausible. And also the whole spanky thing? Uh, no. That was one of several parts of this episode that felt uncomfortably homophobic, which Whedon tends to do. His writing often feels that way, like he feels like he has the right to do or say things that rely on homophobia as the punchline for his jokes. 
But as I've said many times before, if a joke relies on homophobia to be funny, it's probably not a funny joke, and it's definitely not a clever one. You'd be more likely to get a laugh without offending someone by using a fart joke. And while I know that's not everybody's cup of tea exactly, they're at least fairly easy to forget and fairly easy to shrug off. Not so with homophobic jokes. What's really the worst part about this is that Hauser, who is supposedly the big heavy during this episode, is inadequately built up because they're concentrating way too much on this court case, which ultimately doesn't matter that much. It only matters in a completely contrived way, and the magical virus bomb or whatever doesn't end up adding up to much. What they do to defeat the bad guy is basically not defeat the bad guy, just put it off. And they never actually address this again in the season. I do not remember them ever bringing this up again. As for Hauser, Angel just proves that he is a total asshole now. He gives this big talk about mercy and everything, but then he makes this guy basically blow his own head off, which doesn't actually happen in a very likely manner. And his reply to the dude asking him about Mercy is just not in line with what he's just said. This is part of why I cannot stand Joss Whedon's dialogue. He thinks it's very clever, but most of the time it's just puzzling or incoherent or just stupid. It doesn't make any sense and it just makes Angel look all the worse for it. Why would you want to introduce the new season by making your main character, the titular character, so deeply unsympathetic? He has almost no moments of being likable in this entire episode. In fact, nobody really does have enough time to either be likable or have any good lines at all except for Harmony and E, who barely factor into the episode. Harmony actually shows a real inner struggle when she finds that Cordelia is in a coma. Eve shows that she's an interesting multifaceted character who tries to maintain her mystery around Angel and his group. I loved her playful response. That was interesting. That made her an interesting character that I wanted to know more about. But as with many ideas in season 5, they waste her, they waste the potential of Wolfram and Hart, they waste all of this potential, either postponing it, looking the other way, or drawing it out and never actually bringing it any sort of resolution. But most of all, anything potentially interesting in this episode goes absolutely nowhere, it's used as the punchline for unfunny jokes, or somebody tries to be clever with their dialogue and it just ends up being confusing. To be frank, it's also not a particularly creative episode. It just goes through the motions of the original first episode of the series, shows how much things have changed by now, and this is, what, the umpteenth time we've gone through that exact same intro? It's so dull to watch this episode, I can really kind of understand why people weren't that into it. Just Reward is a much better episode, so maybe they were just kind of banking that people would miss the season premiere, which is kind of dumb. It does have a nice ending, though, with Spike materializing in the office when the amulet drops on the floor, but did we have to spend so much time with so many stories that didn't amount to anything? And did they really need to sideline Gun for almost the entire episode? Really? We didn't even get to see anything with him struggling with the thought of, should I do this? Should I not? He was willing to wait five hours in a waiting room to get this knowledge put into his head. He had to know that there would be a cost for that, because nothing at Wolfram and Hart comes free. And yet he blithely accepts that they had no ulterior motives and might put something evil in his head? Or that there might be a cost later? I don't think so. That is not consistent with the character. And for all of the supposed problems they had finding things for his character to do, how difficult is it to write him? Why is it difficult to write him? He's a very simple character. In fact, all of the characters in the main cast are fairly simple characters. They're only complicated by their circumstances and by things that have happened during the show. Do they find it difficult to write him because he's poor? Because that didn't stop them from writing Cordelia in season one. It certainly didn't stop them from writing a compelling Doyle, who definitely towed the line between poverty and actually making it. Whatever it is, I just don't get it. Gunn deserved a lot better, and a lot more respect. In fact, all the characters did, but it doesn't seem like this premiere actually respected any of them adequately. But as you'll see later, pretty much every time Whedon dips his fingers in the mix, it's a dance of disrespect. And while some may applaud his philosophy that no character has plot armor, so to speak, writing an unsatisfying story doesn't make it seem more realistic, more engaging, or more believable. And he's kind of the master of unsatisfying stories that are incredibly unfulfilling. 
If something is dramatically appropriate, it doesn't matter whether it's been done a billion times or not. If it's dramatically appropriate, maybe you should do it. Don't just change things up for the sake of changing things up. But I digress. This episode is the poster child for safe changing things up. It didn't really try to do anything, it just half-assed it. As so much of season 5 half-asses it. After seeing this episode, I kind of get the impression that some of the other earlier episodes that were so inconsistent and so different simply tried to ape what was introduced in this episode and did such a poor job mainly because this episode was also, similarly, not very good. It introduces far too many things at the same time, but the writer isn't really able or willing to deal with any of them adequately or in a satisfying manner. Most of the resolution is done through someone telling us what happened to resolve the situation, not actually showing us what happened. The rest we must infer through what was shown. Ultimately, it's very disappointing, and the next episode would be far more satisfying. But that, I'm afraid, the final episode of my Angel Season 5 reviews. I hope you've enjoyed them. I've enjoyed doing them, some episodes a bit more than others, and it was interesting to go back and look at a show that I hadn't seen in many, many years and watch a bunch of episodes that made me feel a lot of different things about a series that I had kind of written off past a point. As I said before, I wasn't able to see the whole series because at one point I wasn't able to watch a lot of television and didn't have a lot of ability for leisure in my life. It's kind of weird that I should do a review of the entire season that was the only season not to feature my favourite character in the regular cast, but it was also a window into what might have been. Nonetheless, it wasn't a very good window, and as a result, the lack of cohesion and focus and general ineptitude running the show made its cancellation more of a mercy killing, and that mercy was probably because of a lack of conviction. Ironic, really. In any case, I will see you again with another episode of Let's H. Let me know what you'd like me to do next. Maybe if you have another idea, if you've enjoyed these reviews, let me know what you think. Let me know your suggestions. I'm looking for new things to do. Be sure to follow me on social media, sign up for my Patreon, and you'll always know when I've got something new. And as I've said before, I'm Husho, and you're welcome. Bye.